I'm Richard Jack Smith of Real Talk Movie Reviews. Today I'm going to be reviewing Sekiro, The Second Life of Souls by Ludovic Castro. I recently finished this book, published by 3rd Editions. It's excellent stuff. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is a game from a company called From Software under the aegis of Hidetaka Miyazaki. Like Dark Souls and Bloodborne before it, it's known for being quite a challenge, especially for casual gamers. I would say, as a personal preference, I like to be overpowered when playing a video game. Whether that means being able to take more hits or having the means to heal or dealing out tremendous damage to um, artificial intelligence enemies. Yet from software, bypasses that preference completely. They give you a health bar which is often minuscule in comparison to what the enemy bosses and sub-bosses can be. My time playing Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, briefly, wasn't a rewarding one. I struggled with the deflection or parry system. The speed and intensity of the combat was also quite daunting. I couldn't get past the first boss. The first three sub-bosses, yes, the one just before the Chained Ogre and the one just after, but it took a lot of work. Now I do plan to come back to Sekiro and play it again at some point in the future because I'm a little bit more knowledgeable now about how it works and having read Castro's book, I'm even more informed. And indeed, there are a lot of unanswered questions and hidden aspects to the game which you will find explored in this book. Why certain characters are placed the way they are, what their relationship to others might be, and the locations and how this, from a design standpoint, was totally different to Bloodborne and the Dark Souls trilogy and Demon Souls. Now, Castro's writing style, his presentation of ideas, first rate. The binding and printing quality on the book, the font size. Normally I, I can be a little bit put off by such a small font, not this time, that the content shone through and I was able to enjoy myself immensely with this. If there's one criticism, although it won't deduct anything from the final rating, it would have been nice to have had some pictures, especially when he's discussing specific characters or places, but again I'm not going to deduct a star just for that. In terms of the cover design, which you can see right next to me, it's a little bit busy, but it carries the, I guess, very nebulous intentions, the, I guess you'd say, haze of being a shinobi, uh, the lone wolf, because uh, Sekiro means uh, one-armed wolf. I am looking forward to not only reading Castro's book again, but going back into Segro, knowing a lot of this stuff. While I did find myself occasionally getting impatient with, you know, the discussion of the themes and such in such detail as he as he does here, um, because I was quite eager to get onto the section near the end where he discusses composer Yuka Kitamura and her music. And I was very impressed. He does a great analysis on that. But like I say, for any questions or any um, queries that the player or casual reader might have about the game, this is the book to really seek out. There's a there's other volumes which are more about the artwork, so I guess they could this could be a companion to those. Castro's prose style is is very specific. He doesn't uh, overcrowd his sentences. They don't go on and for reams and reams for like eight or nine lines. He's very concise. The way that he structures the book to go through almost section by section the different parts of the game as you play it and how things relate to each other. There's little footnotes that you can see on the bottom of the page with more information and that was um, definitely a feature which helped with his analysis of the music. Very impressive. I would say, Mr Castro, please write more books because we definitely need more books like this about video games. I also enjoyed David Kushner's work on <clears throat> um, the uh, Grand Theft Auto series. 
So, in terms of a reading experience, I found myself taking my time with Sekiro, The Second Life of Souls. And I think that was the right thing to do. Now we all, some of us speed read, some of us take our time. I'm more in the latter category. It's why it's taken so long for me to bring out another book review for you. But I like the fact that the amount of information here will make you want to read something again about Sekiro. And there are a lot of secrets in the book about the story and the characters, which I wasn't expecting, but in many ways the book surpassed my expectations because I want a book about a video game to be informative and entertaining and this was that with absolute, you know, a cheerful readiness, <laughs> if you like, and there's definite enthusiasm which comes through in the writing. Now, uh, in terms of... Uh, a recommendation it's wholehearted this is definitely a must buy and if you love the game or have played the game and maybe didn't quite get very far this might rekindle your interest in it it's a five out of five stars for me it, it, it's, it's there's no noticeable flaw to the book you know nothing that really stood out as being oh they could have done that better you know I'm very happy with what's here Briefly, I'd like to discuss my experience playing Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I struggled with it because I didn't understand the combat system. I focused far too much on the health bar of enemies, and that's not the, what you're supposed to do. You can have an enemy, it's their posture gauge. That's the, the bit on the top middle of the screen, not the top left. And that's what you have to focus on. That was the mistake I made. And indeed, if you fill that out, that allows you then to beat one of the health bars, because sometimes bosses have more than one health bar, and even the sub-bosses do, but you can often use stealth to whittle one of those away. There's tons of secrets here and things. It doesn't go a lot into like the prosthetic tools to, to a large extent. Maybe that's something that could have been explained a bit more. But then again, I will come back to this book and discover more of its secrets in the future. So... And there's also some excellent YouTubers, uh, Tyrannicon, his playthroughs on Sekiro, both the, uh, the full hardy ones and the ones where he's playing as an expert are funny, hilarious. I'm, I'm always thinking about those experiences that he had and, and his commentaries. Katie Cakes is another one YouTuber who's, it's her favourite game, Sekiro, and this book follows in line with the passion that people have and it's interesting when you're talking about the difficulty of the game because as Castro makes clear in his book it comes down to personal preference it's very much a case of how much time you want to invest in the experience whether you want to learn certain move sets of enemies bosses the blazing bull Oniwa the guard horseback that's the one I got stuck on because if you look at playthroughs and you, and you read what people have to say, it can give you a clue as to how to approach a given situation. And that's definitely something that time and a bit of patience and discipline can definitely... Uh, and, and I've seen playthroughs where the rhythm of the game and the timings of deflections and stuff are so on point, it's very inspiring, especially against some of the later bosses, Genichiro and Emma and Sword Saint. Uh, absolutely fantastic. I, I hope to get to a level like that with enough time and persistence like I say I do in turn playing Sekiro again and the book I will definitely read again and it's highly recommended. For more film and soundtrack reviews please visit Betty Jo Tucker's website Real Talk Movie Reviews. On Facebook you can find my pages Hypnotic Movie Reviews and hypnotic soundtrack reviews. You can also find me on Twitter at mbeanfan101. I am Richard Jack Smith. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.